So it's Fusion Radio, Brian Stetson, YTS, Keith, and guess who then popped on up and said, look, I'm a guest co-host the rest of the show with us, XO Karen. <laughs> what's up, what's up? And so he's here, man, and uh, also, man, you know what I love about it is we have artists, we have business entrepreneurs, but we also show love to the DJ. And I'm, like, so really, really geeked up about talking with this next guest because, man, he's doing a lot of dope things, man. He was like, brother, I want to be on the show. <laughs> I want to be on yeah. with uh with YTS Keys and Brian Stanson. <laughs> and uh and uh and uh and uh XO Beer. No doubt, man. So who who am I talking about? Those of you that's on Facebook Live, you see him. My brother man, DJ Green is in the building. What's going on, man? Man, excited about having you, man. Excited about getting into all things you, man. So you being a DJ man and everything, you know, I have a great appreciation for the DJ right here on Fusion Radio and everything. And so wanted to talk about, man, what inspired you, man, to, to become a DJ? Well, really, I started off, like, being an artist, like, freestyling and doing YouTube stuff. So I started listening to beats and stuff like that. And I watched my uncle do parties and stuff like that. And I was like, should I should I do it or still rap? So I was like, all right, I'm gonna stick to DJ and see how this works. And it actually like worked out really good. And I had the crowd moving off little tools I even had growing up. And I started at age 11 years old. So like doing this like from the projects on up, I'm I'm trying to get to level up like for real. For sure, for sure. No, it's really exciting. Like. What would you say your biggest inspiration was, um, like, for your music or, like, the music you selected? Who would you, like, choose from? Like, artists? Yeah, artists. Like, what artists that were you inspired by, like, when you were DJing? What, what, what's your music taste? Like, I like mostly, like, soul, um, oldies, R&B, sometimes hip-hops, the new stuff that's coming out. But mostly I'm trying to get the, the older people you know, understand, understand the young people because, sure, sure. you know, the young DJs don't play all the old stuff. So by me being young, playing all the old stuff, all the old people were really looking at me like, oh, you going crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's so, interesting, though. Yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's a good spin, like soul and like that old school music because not a lot of DJs like are with that. That's yeah. amazing, bro. Keep it up. That's what I'm talking about, man. First off, welcome to Fusion Radio, first off. But one thing I wanted to ask is, you know, we on live right now, and we got a lot of people tapping in from all different type of places, all different type of states around the United States. So what's some type of, like, in some type of way, we like to drop gems here, too. That's one thing we like to do. We call it classes and session. So as a DJ, uh, a DJ, just get them a couple gems of, like, certain things that they could use to help enhance their careers and stuff like that. Because sometimes, you know, we, we need a little help. You feel me? And you being a DJ, you know the hot music. You know what people like, what people don't like. You feel me? You know what turns people up, what turns them down. So just get the people on the chat or just people listening. Give them a little advice. Tell them, put them on. I them remember one of the older DJs from the projects told me to put your crowd, like, do music that the crowd wanted. So I, I seen it as like being a DJ, I had to keep my crowd moving. I can't let it be flapping around. I don't really talk on the mic too much. So when I mix, I really sound like the radio for real. And that's just do my thing by being quiet. But like, I'm trying to get out this shy shield and start talking up and, hey, woo, turn it up, hey, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, far as doing that, you gotta, you gotta put some, Motivation, pump them up, turn them up, you know what I'm saying? Be a good person, you know, you gotta be all bad and be all mean to mm -hmm. your client, to other people, you know what I'm saying? You gotta show love to them, they gonna show love to you. Like, I've been at a lot of parties, I had wrong, bad stuff and still pushed it and still get paid. And I had a little budget of money to survive on that, you know what I'm saying? So you just gotta keep pushing at that your, sure. your ability up for sure so next i want to talk about one of them parties you feel me because i know you done probably went to all different type of parties seen oh, all I different type of things so <laughs> like just just give us a little quick little story like well one of the ones because i know you probably i probably i know you probably ain't got that one specific 
party that stands out, but just one that's off the top of your head you could tell us about, like, you feel me, that we could talk about the radio, like, just as far as how the first, vibe was. Okay, my first time doing an old school party, I was scared. It was my auntie party. She was turning, what, 60 or 65, something like that. So I ain't really had all the old school music, but I had some of the old school music. So my mom was like, do your thing. And I showed him. It was one old man was, you know, crippled or whatnot. He couldn't walk. When I say I played one Dusty, that man got up and got the groove. <laughs> like, man, oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Like, that stuff that was like inspiring me to keep motivating that with the old people, you know what I'm saying? And they, they love what I do, you know what I'm saying? Especially the young people, too, like. They they like that young stuff, so I just grew it in because I do the little juke and all that stuff. So, yeah. You were talking about uh, oh, oh, my fault. you were talking yeah. about uh, one of your your first uh, performances. How you were a little bit nervous. Do you do you still get that the nerves like when you're starting to or like when you're performing now, or do you feel like you're more so locked in and you're ready to go? Well, I be like both ways. Sometimes yeah. I get a little butterflies yeah, in my yeah, stomach because yeah. I, I I do do music too so right. when i do uh outside performance and stuff like that i get that nerve but i keep it going so i won't catch that nerve or mess up because i know like some of the words were half of the words but i just keep it going if I, I mess up you know what i'm saying so getting that butterflies at my stomach i just keep pushing like ooh, do 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 because like being an artist hard you gotta do a a lot of stuff move around, yeah. <laughs> turn the crowd up and all that. DJs, they sit around, they do their thing, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that stuff. This is WIIT 88.9 FM Chicago broadcasting from the A Sydney Cat Studio. Right around the corner for what in White Sox play, they shaking things up over here. <laughs> and find the general manager and the vice president of operations. When ain't that? <laughs> Just recently. Oh, man. And shots ringing out. You can't even go, <laughs> go to the game safe no more. Somebody then snuck a gun in there. Nah, I seen right. that. I seen yeah, that. I seen that. Like, I be watching a lot of YouTube and, like, um, crime rates and stuff like that that be posted on Instagram. That stuff be, like, crazy and scary. I don't really go outside unless it's got to do with business or family venues and stuff like that. So, like, I don't just go outside and chill around unless it's some that the family want to do or uh, I want to do or uh, doing a party. That's it. I just be in the house cool it. But I actually watch the stuff and just see how crazy it was getting in Chicago. It sure is, man. Uh, before the incident with the shots uh, in the stands, uh, quietly as this kept, uh, the White Sox are considering in six years uh, leaving Illinois, period. Right. And so there is um, a fight to keep them here. In, in Chicago and Illinois period and everything. So uh, that's my wrap up as far as that. I just want to tie that in with, you know, we broadcast. Because people always ask, like, man, y'all right where the White Sox play? They don't never say the name of the stadium because it's been changed <laughs> about five damn yeah. times. Comiskey Park. Why we out? Well, why we U.S. Shelby. With... <laughs> now it's guaranteed <laughs> rate. Guaranteed <laughs> rate <laughs> fail. Man. But why we always got to lose our sports teams, though? Ain't we finna get ready to lose the Bears, too? Yeah, the Bears are going to Arlington Heights right. when their <laughs> contract is up. Well, with the Bears, and then we'll get back to it with our, our guest, DJ Green. With the Bears, I think the situation is, unfortunately, is there would have to be a lot of movement downtown where a lot of stuff get torn down to make the space that they need for them to build a stadium. And I just think that's a long process. You'd have to take a lot of stuff from out of downtown that makes downtown Chicago downtown Chicago. And um, my understanding is, you know, they do, they want to start over from scratch. I right. mean, that's right. going to be right. something, though, man, because I don't know nobody that, that lives, like, all the way in, like, uh, Matson that's going to travel all the way to Arlington Heights. You Wait, know what I'm saying? Where is Arlington Heights? Where Arlington is Heights is, 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 is north, further north. Also, it's that way. Right? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, but we still got a little more time before that happens because they haven't even started building the stadium. So this is just this infancy stages, and they can't just break their lease and just leave. 
mm-hmm. the city. So we still got some time, like literally before that happens, but it's inevitable. And it's like at that point, what do you do with Soldier Soldier Field? Like quietly as it kept, you know why we haven't had a Super Bowl here? I thought it was because it wasn't on Dome over the over Soldier Field. That's part of it, and we have one of the smallest stadiums. Mm-hmm. When it comes to qualifications, mm-hmm. as far as um, what it holds, I didn't know that part. So that's why, you know, that's why. Uh, but DJ Green is here, man. I want to go back to that song that you played uh, that had the man moving around. Do you remember the name of the song that you played, that Dusty that you played? I'm just curious. Which one was that? Oh, no. It had to be some uh, temptation or something like it was like a little old. Uh, like it was some I forgot what name was was it, but it was some near to that, and he actually got up because he wasn't removing for real. Everybody had to help him sit down and yeah. stuff like that. So when he got up, I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Right? <laughs> I'm like eight, what, like nineteen, eighteen around this time. Right. So it was crazy. He said the temptation. That's your back. That's that's your era right there. <laughs> That's when you when you had the J Curl, you no, no. Afro, you feel me, with the pick in there, you feel me, Black Power, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just playing. I'm really <laughs> just bad to say. What do you say? Pick. That it was the Rolling Stone. <laughs> hey, it's crazy. I still play that song. Like, literally, I still play that song, and I mix it up with that new uh, Migo song with that. Mm-hmm. Go crazy mm-hmm. every time. I hit him with that, then hit him with that new Migos. Go crack. Kill him. Overkill him. Send it to him. He, he need that. Send it to him. <laughs> he need that. We got to play that on the show one day. Man, so I want to get into, man, like outside of, you know, you being a DJ, man, you do uh, party events for the youth, man. Talk about some of those from the past, man, and some highlights from those, man. Some dances maybe they was doing that you was just like, they going crazy. Um, uh, It been like, Certain parties I did when they had a little circle and they was dancing, footworking and stuff like that. Like every time I play some Chicago ish, it go nuts. Like it could be a block party and I turn it up, it go nuts. They like, who is this DJ? He don't really talk too much. It'll be another person that be want to get on the mic. Like, who want to get on the mic? Hey, shout out DJ Green. Ooh, ooh, you over there. Ooh, ooh, turn it up. Hey, you did it. Eh, eh, eh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stuff like that. So I'm like, okay. Even though I ain't going to talk on the mic, but I'm going to at least, you know, turn them up and do what I do. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it don't never be no record that you play that you just feel like you just going to come out of your shell. You start dancing and then you start talking at the same time. Like, it ain't no record that's like your personal favorite that you like. If I play that one, I might just talk this time. I say, like, uh, my brother music. Like, when I play his D&D or uh, Over With, they go crazy. They try to figure who, like, I, I went to New York, um, a, like, a couple months. Shout out, cooked the book. I went to New York, DJed out there. I played the Over With. Everybody from New York, everybody from different other cities, because I was networking while I was out there, you know what I'm saying? So everybody from different cities come out. They was going crazy. All my little brother stuff. So I'm like, I, right, I'm gonna keep playing this at every party I do. That's what's up, man. So man, if somebody wants to book you for their youth event, man, and uh, turn that that place up, man, you know they're gonna have to. I, I got a feeling when you do a youth event that they have to, man, come back in and reconstruct the price. <laughs> and all them youth then got done and all that stuff in there, man. Yeah, the reconstruction. And, I, and not to cut you off, I show really love to people like I do like lower price, even though I try to get my minimum how much I really charge, but I do show love like here and there, just give me this and that, and we good, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all be good and make sure I'm good and that too is safe because I don't really go to a lot of crazy parties like that anymore because stuff going on, you know what I'm saying? Because when I was a kid, I was going through the real trenches who had a lot of stuff going on, going in there, just doing my thing. And I was scared at first, but I was like, all right, I was in projects, so I understand what's going on. It's so I was learning different sets and hoods and stuff, being a DJ, going in their houses and doing that. It's crazy. 
for the people that's listening and that's not familiar with our city, you don't even got to be, like, involved in nothing to have to have that type of mindset. Like, and that's the crazy part about Chicago. Like, you don't have to be involved with nothing to be a victim of anything. Like, you could just be at the wrong place at the wrong time. This man literally just sat here and said he be going in there just DJing, just doing his thing. He ain't looking for no trouble or nothing. But at the same time, he still got to think about that and got to move in some type of way. That's one thing that comes with being from our city, though. But at the same time, though, it's like it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, though. Because, like, I feel like if you can move, like, safe and, like, do your thing in Chicago, I feel like you could do that anywhere. Like, if you could, like, maintain and do your thing in Chicago, I feel like you can go anywhere and stuff. Because it's just... A, people, a lot of people don't understand the stuff that we got to do on a daily and, like, that we feel is normal. A lot of other places is not normal. And they right. look at us like we crazy. Because, like, mm -hmm. why y'all know how to do this? Or why y'all move like this? It's just, this is normal where we come from. Yeah. It was crazy. Because I had, like, the group I went to uh, New York with, they used to have Chicago, too. So when I went to New York, everybody was looking like, why are these people so deep? <laughs> you know how we be deep in, in the rap. They, why y'all deep? So they trying to figure out who we is, but we happy because we in New York. Like, this is my first time actually going to New York and see the city for real. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing that. Thing. Oh, no. Nah, they tweaking on us already, and we got <laughs> to have fun with them, you know? <laughs> but it was like some showing love out there, too. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, I would say... I, I really, I don't know, I, what, what you've been saying has really been inspiring me. I feel like the fact that, that you were saying that you, you know, sometimes you'll work your budget out, you know what I'm saying? But you're, you're just doing it for the sake of your love for the music, you know? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate artists that are, artists and DJs who are doing that, because they're doing it for the right reasons. And that story that you were talking about with the old man, how you caught him up, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's impactful, bro. Like, I feel like you're really spreading the movement. Like, keep it going. Don't ever give up, because I feel like you got it, bro. You're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, much love. Man, DJ Green, man, you also, man, uh, I see, man, uh, put it down when it comes to the beats, man, and everything, man. So talk to me about, man, you know, what the inspiration for that came from. And then, like, um, the whole process, man, of when you're creating something, man, that the mind thought you have to be in. Like, when I was, like, seven years old, watching my uncle in a room making beats, making, like, history with other artists and stuff like that. I seen my cousin start making beats. I said, maybe I want to learn this too. You know what I'm saying? So by me being an artist, DJ, producer, and stuff like that, it, it bring me more to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if my artists don't work, like if I don't do music, rap, and stuff like that, I got another plan to do. You know what I'm saying? To make money and stuff like that. So, like, producing, I want to bring out, like, new art artists to get my beats out to do that. I started doing samples, too. Like, I've been going crazy on samples and stuff like that, going crazy. And I'll be trying to keep that going, too, because I started, like, 20, like, 17, just using the piano and stuff like that. And I'm like, I got a drum and all that stuff. So I'm going to just do that, ooh, 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 and start going crazy. Once they was like, oh, you going crazy. I start learning new things every time, every day. I take notes and learn new things and start going every time. So, man, let's build on a couple of things. Number one, man, is um, where can people check out some of your, your beats and all that stuff, man? You got a place where we can check that out. And number two is some artists that you work with that we should be checking for. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start my another YouTube page, but right now I got a uh, YouTube DJ Green Films because I use it to shoot videos, too. And I post all my music and stuff there. Where I'm going to start making another page with all my beats and stuff like that. But I just got to get all my stuff together before I give it out. Because you know how you put free beats and all that and people download it and, you know, record off it. You want to make profit off what you do. You know what I'm saying? So I just got to get that, that marketing straight first. Then start posting it on YouTube and stuff like that. For sure. Um, one thing I've been sitting here thinking about, though, I know we talked about a lot of things, but one thing I've been thinking about is 
Like, what's some um, what's some different artists outside of like your brother and like certain other people that we know all back, like you be doing your mixes with and stuff like that. What's some other artists that you didn't tap in with that you didn't been like okay, or you didn't been in certain places and like just because you was in there doing your thing, they wanted to chop it up with you and do some business and stuff like that. I got this artist named T Hunto, Shaw T. I've been doing like I say like ten beats with him. And been, he been going crazy. He'll tell like real life stories and stuff. What he did growing up and struggle. And once he went on my beats and started going crazy. So T, uh, I said my brother. Um, I got a female artist that's coming soon. We we got some stuff chopping up. So I'm just working on trying to get new artists because they kind of really mess with me with the producing and recording and stuff like that because I can engineer too but I let my little brother do it because he the hottest out right now mm -hmm. okay so like to piggyback off that like with you being so faceted in so many different things and like being stretched in so many different directions like how do you necessarily deal with that though you see because I know especially like when you pop in with one thing but you still trying to do all the other stuff too though. Like how is that like I know that's not easy. So how do you deal with it though? Like sometimes I get a, a little stressed about it, but like I do it in different like timing and um days to figure out what I'm gonna do. So one day I do some beats for the weekend or another day for the weekend I go on live and do broadcast mixing and stuff like that. Then another day I start off doing beats again. Then or I just record and just rap and stuff like that in my room. So I'm gonna play devil's advocate real quick. Just to piggyback out that question again. If you had to just pick one though, and like you really put your all into that one craft, because I know it's great to be like multifaceted and do multiple things. Like it, that's great. But if you really had to pick one, which would you go with? Like, would it be making music, DJing, or like producing and like making beats and stuff? I say DJing for the most part. Producing too. Don't get me wrong. Like I want to stick to both of them too, because you know you got DJs and producers that's out just going crazy. Mm -hmm. But in my Rapping don't even get out like it's supposed to. I'm just do them two things. Just right off back. For sure, for sure. I ain't gonna lie. We, this was a great conversation. We talked about a lot today. We definitely dropped a lot of jewels. The people on the live, they've been saying a lot of things. You feel me? They've been tapping in with us and stuff like that. They've been seeing you doing your thing. So, like, what's just before we get up out of here and stuff like that with you? Just get the people your social medias and stuff like that so they could tap in with you so they could like either try to book you for us um, to come in, turn up their party, or just like if they want to tap in with you on a beat or like do a song with you or something. Just get them people. So in. I mostly get on um, Facebook all the time because I'm really going crazy on Facebook. It's my DJ Green. Uh, my YouTube is DJ Green Films. My TikTok, I do every mixes every weekend. My TikTok is DJ Green 33 and my Instagram, I say DJ Green too. I can't say cuss word, but it's between making hits and stuff like that. But DJ Green, you'll probably, it'll probably pop up for you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. We definitely got more guests going on today, man. Me and my boy, Brand, we doing our thing, but we'll tap back in with y'all in one second. It's Fusion Radio with Brand Stinson and YTS Keys.